the so-called doomsday cult mom. Her two kids are missing. She's charged with desertion. And she's in jail waiting for her prelim, waiting for her trial. Also waiting for the end of the world. Now, what order those things are going to happen in? I know the prelim will be before the trial, but I don't know if the world is going to end before the prelim, after the prelim, before the trial, or after the trial. We'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, she's trying to get out of jail, tried to get her bond reduced. We covered it live here on Court TV. Take a listen to the judge, but take a look at Lori Vallow's reaction. I'm denying the motion for bond reduction because I cannot find any good cause um, to reduce bond further than it already has. That... That is the look of disappointment on the face of Lori Vallow Daybell. Disappointment. Uh, denied a bail reduction. So now, where is she? What's, what's going on? What's next? What charges specifically is she facing? Let's bring in Court TV correspondent Chanley Painter. Uh, Chanley, great to see you tonight. Um, what is her status? So as we sit here tonight, what is the status of Lori Vallow Daybell? Well, she's being held in the Madison County Jail for $1 million bail, and likely she'll be able to make that and get out, so therefore she's going to sit there until the preliminary hearing. Now, this is over a two-and-a-half-hour marathon bond reduction hearing that her defense attorney tried over and over to establish grounds to get that bail reduced so that she could leave the jail, because according to the defense, it is virtually impossible for him to have an attorney-client privilege relationship under the COVID-19 restrictions there at the Madison County Jail saying, look, they even recorded at least two or three of our phone call conversations, admitted it, deleted them. But then again, the prosecution responded during that hearing saying that there's no good cause shown in these affidavits or these uh, evidence presented or lack thereof by the defense in this hearing. And the judge agreed with the prosecution saying every defendant at Madison County Jail is going through the same issues as Lori Vallow. They'll have to work around it. But Vinny, notably not there at the hearing, her husband, Chad Daybell. He was not there. We have confirmation. But he is on the prosecution's witness list. Will he be called at the preliminary hearing? That's the next big hearing in this case. Will he be called? The prosecution released almost 50 potential witnesses, but the defense attorney says that he's been told they'll only call around 12 to 13 during that preliminary hearing, July 9th and 10th, and that's an important next step. All right, July 9th and 10th. Now, let's remind everyone, these are not murder charges that she's facing. Specifically, what is she charged with in Idaho in the case that she's in jail on right now? Well, she's being charged with two felony counts of child abandonment, specifically desertion and non-support of children. Of course, that goes to the prosecution saying that she abandoned her 7-year-old J.J. Vallow, her 17-year-old Tylee Ryan. Then she faces several misdemeanor counts, resisting and obstructing an officer. That is for allegedly lying to the police when they conducted that welfare check in November 26th of last year when J.J.'s grandparents called for the welfare check. She said that J.J. was in error. Arizona with her friend. Well, that leads to the next count, solicitation, because police say that she called her friend in Arizona, Melanie Gibb, to lie about J.J.'s whereabouts. J.J. was not with her friend in Arizona. And then the final count of contempt goes to the January 16 child protection order filed where she had to produce her kids. She did not comply with that order, and that's the charge of contempt. All right, so July 9th and 10th, the prelim. We don't think she's getting out on bond. She's got to raise a million dollars somehow. Have someone put that up for her. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. In the meantime, uh, let's bring in the rest of the Court TV team. We've got with us uh, Ashley Banfield and Julie Grant joining the conversation. And, um, you know, I watch Court TV all the time, okay? I watch it. Uh, you know, we do the show here. I watch the replay just to see how everything went, <laughs> right? But, but you know what? A story like this... But a story like this, you got to keep your eyes open because uh, different people are talking to different uh, organizations. And um, I, I watched the Dateline special that they did, and a lot came out in that Dateline special as well. Uh, Ashley, I know you had an opportunity to see that as well. Uh, what was your big takeaway uh, from anything that we heard there that we did, haven't heard in court, haven't uh, read about in any uh, court papers yet? Uh, you got two hours, Vinny. Because that's what it would take to <laughs> download all of that. To be honest, there look, there were a lot of the things that the Dateline program 
presented. We had seen some of before, but there was some really interesting new stuff. And I really think it was telling that Keith Morrison interviewed Melanie Boudreaux and her husband, Ian Pulowski. So she's Melanie Pulowski. But her demeanor in being asked about all of these coincidences and all of these marriages all at the same time and all of these desertions of former spouses and then all of these dead people and missing people. You know, her response was so cavalier. Um, she said, actually, there's no cult. We're all just doing our thing. Those are the words. There's no cult. We're all just doing our thing. As if to say Keith Morrison's question was crazy. But the reality was Keith and a few other news organizations have gotten their hands on some pretty telling documents that her adorable new husband, Ian Pulowski, has written. He didn't think we were all going to get him. He didn't think anybody was going to get him. But he gave his computer to his ex-wife, and lo and behold, she found them, right? So in those documents, Ian spills the beans about the cult. Ian tells us all about zombies and, and evil spirits and, and really crazy behavior. And the end of the world being, oh, July 22nd you know what? She's going to get that prelim before the end of the world. Anyway, so the truth is I found Melanie to be extremely disingenuous. To look Keith Morrison in the eye and say, there's no cult. Come on. We just are all doing our, you know, our own thing. And then there's that document. Her own husband is writing about her and about Lori and all the other people that surround them and Chad saying, oh, hell yeah, there's a cult and it's crazy. So that was my big takeaway. Julie, let me pick up on that because, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, Melanie Boudreaux for a while here, perhaps being the key to the whole case to unlock and take investigators, which is the most important part, to take investigators inside what was happening in Lori's world. Um, if she's speaking publicly to the media and has been allegedly cooperating with investigators, that tells me she may not know what happened here to all these people who died and the two children who are missing. How do you read it? Yeah, that's a great point, Vinny, because she could still be in the dark as close as we know she was with her Aunt Lori and uh, seems to really have uh, wanted to spend as much time as possible with her doing the move as well to Rexburg, Idaho at the same time to be close to her living in the apartment next door. She may have been kept in the dark. I mean, really, the only people who may know what's going on with those kids are Mr. Doomsday and Mrs. Doomsday. So uh, perhaps Melanie was kept in the dark and maybe she wanted it that way. Maybe she was a little frightened after what happened to Lori Vallow's ex-husband, Chad Daybell's former wife, and of course, Uncle Alex Cox. So so who knows with her, but I'll say it, I said before, I'll say it again. If she does know, she needs to talk now or else. If law enforcement is ready to bring some charges for homicide and there's a conspiracy and if she's in any way involved she could be looking at at charges if there is any behavior that was criminal so i would hope she would cooperate if she has knowledge Vinny, and uh, this way um cut things off at the pass if you will yeah great point you know anyone who's connected uh to a conspiracy they're gonna rope in because everyone you rope in becomes a potential witness that you can flip um, Chanley, let's, let's get back to Lori Vallow and, and, and the hearing that happened, uh, inside the court and the bail reduction. And one of the things I heard from, from Mark Means, the attorney for Lori Vallow, Daybell, uh, it seemed like he had a specific number. He's trying to get that bail reduced like 500,000 or less. He was throwing out some numbers. Do we have any indication as to the magic of those numbers? Right. Well, he did release a couple of statements. He spoke to some of the media and gave us some uh, insight into why he would want it less than $500,000. And he says, quote, there's not a lot of goodwill for his client, Lori Vallow, as she's sitting in the Madison County Detention Center right now. There are not a lot of people that are willing to step up and participate or put their name down or on a co-sign sheet to help acquire a million dollars for the bond. A million dollar bond here is much more difficult than in Los Angeles where the average home is $1.3 million. It's a little more difficult to come up with the equity to make that happen here. He's referring to Rexburg, Idaho. And then he says the $500,000 puts it in a more reasonable range for what the client might possibly do, but there's no guarantee they could even meet that. Vinny, at the end of the hearing, he was asking the judge for around $100,000 to $250,000, and of course she shot him down.
Yeah, and, and, and I guess reading into that is, okay, we want to put up a, a house or something. Uh, not unusual, Julie Grant, for that to be done for someone to get out of bail. You come up with creative ways to secure the money. Maybe you uh, have your own house with which Chad may have, or friends, relatives, members of the, of the church, followers may be willing to do that, but uh, a million, you're going to need a bunch of houses out there in East Idaho. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And and some willing bill bondsmen, too, who are willing to help out uh, with that as well. And and I've read some reports, Vinny, and a lot of people want to steer clear of her for obvious reasons, and you can't blame them. And she is certainly a flight risk. So for a bill bondsman, that's their biggest risk, right, is not being able to find that client. And so with her, she already, you know, went off to Hawaii, had her nice wedding, not a care in the world as to where those kids are. I mean, big picture, Vinny, this is really frightening because when you think about it, it's not like Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell are pointing the finger at someone else saying, oh my gosh, maybe the kids were kidnapped or, oh, we don't know what, what occurred. We last saw them when. It's not like they're pointing the finger at anybody else. So that tells me, okay, maybe these kids are, you know, option number one, hopefully somewhere safe with someone secretly caring for them. We can hope for that. Or uh, the other two options, which are bad, is that they are dead or they were sold, uh, something like that. So really, really dreadful uh, possibilities when you think big picture in these beautiful children, Vinny. Chanley, another issue we've been talking about a lot is, and it came up in court, that he's representing Chad and Lori Valaday Bell. Did he address that at all? And, and what did he say? Yeah, he did address that. An interesting answer, too. He says, quote, there's obviously complications when it comes to representing a married couple. But there's also complications and conflicts when you represent someone like Lori and you don't represent someone like Chad. It's trading one set of problems for potentially another set of problems. Uh, Ashley, I, you know, it, it, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just I, I don't know what to make laugh of that. And laugh. I don't know. I can't believe this guy. He knows that the Attorney General, he knows that the Attorney General of Idaho has reached out to the local prosecutor to say, we're going to work together here in looking at murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and attempted murder. He knows that's all circulating, right? He knows he may have two clients whose trials could be severed or could be together. It's just, it's dumb. It is just dumb, D-U-M, dumb. And so I got to be honest, I don't know that this guy eventually is going to be, by the way, I hope you know that's a meme that I don't really spell dumb that way. This guy is going to have to figure out how to work with these two clients differently because there is a whole world of hurt coming down on them. And the fascinating part is, do you see this picture that we're looking at here? She's not looking around, is she, Vinny? She's not looking around in the gallery like, where's Chad? Maybe she was wisened up before she came out from the holding cell that he ain't going to be here. Probably not in his best interest, but I want to know, while that lawyer was suggesting that there's not a whole lot of money and a whole lot of people who love her and who want to put up the money, Chad's supposed to love her. He just married her, and he just collected on $430,000 in insurance money on his dead wife, Tammy. So did they spend it all on that wedding? Where's the $430,000? Isn't that pretty close to what you're going to need to you know, get towards a, a solid bail if you can find another bail? It just seemed weird to me that she didn't even seem to be craning her neck around. Like, she just knew fait accompli. He's not there. I don't know. The whole thing just stinks. By the way, she's got enough dead people in her past as well that she may have collected on some other life insurance. So I wonder where all the money's gone. Follow the money, I always say. Yeah. Um, Chanley, the other part, Mark means, uh, the one thing that I will hand it, it, it to him, and, you know, inside the courtroom, uh, a strong presence. I mean, he was like the star of that uh, bond reduction hearing, um, you know, having his voice heard, being very passionate for his uh, client. And I could see a guy like that, you know, getting in front of a jury and, and telling the story. Um, but the other part of this is, I mean, this is a big case. This is going to be time consuming. Uh, there's, it's, it's high profile. I understand that. But Lori Vallow can't make bond. I don't know how much money she has. Why did he even take this case? Yeah, he answered that question too, Vinny. And it's also interesting. He said, quote, I think people need to understand that no matter who a defendant is in our country, they are entitled to a defense that complies with the rules of law and exercise their rights through the Constitution. He, go he goes on to say, guilty or not, I don't care who the person is. 
clarifies, I'm not saying Lori is guilty. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, we maintain her innocence. She is entitled at the end of the day, regardless of who you feel, uh, who, how you feel, sorry, about her religious beliefs, personal beliefs, actions, inactions, whatever happened, she is entitled to a defense. And he feels honored to be able to attempt to provide that for his client, Lori Vallow. Yeah, um, Ashley, sounds, he sounds like one of the true believers. You know, there's some defense attorneys that, all right, it doesn't matter who you are, you come in, I'm going to do my job, because if I don't do my job, the whole system crumbles as much of a, a public enemy that I may eventually become doing my job. I love that passion. I think that's wonderful. It's why I literally always have this in my desk. It's the United States Constitution and um, the Declaration of Independence. And I believe that somewhere in this little tiny book, there are rights that are afforded to those kids as well. I don't know. Call me crazy. Yes, of course she has the right to a defense. Yes, of course we're going to presume her innocent before guilty. But there's a weird circumstance that surrounds the case. All she needs to do to make that bail and walk out is to produce the children. It really comes back down to this very simple question. Produce the children. And then you can get out and you don't need a million dollar bail. You don't need any of it. Produce the children. Where are they? They have constitutional rights to safety and security and you know freedom to move about the cabin as well. <laughs>